welcome to episode number 14 of the Nintendo Jump Podcast. We are a weekly discussion podcast created for Nintendo gamers by Nintendo gamers. It's the week of September 24th. I'm Daryl, and today I'm once again joined by Sergio. Hello, everybody. And Kevin. What's good, everybody? How's it going, guys? Pretty decent. Unfortunately, I don't have anything for 14. I'm trying to think of a pun of something funny, <laughs> but... I got nothing. Nothing, <laughs> got nothing. no. <laughs> uh, nothing. At no. a certain point, we start falling off of uh, video game numbering for everything that's not like Final Fantasy. Yeah. You know, actually, it would have been cool to say Red 13 from Final Fantasy 7, but it's 14, so it's like, ah, uh, <laughs> man. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Our, our, our pun well has fallen out a little bit. <laughs> that's, that's all we got. <laughs> that's all we got. <laughs> Oh, so uh should be should be a fun episode today. Uh to start things off a little bit, definitely want to say thanks again to everyone who sent in music for the music podcast. That was a lot of fun uh coming out of it. And I want to say that we are already receiving uh submissions for the next music podcast, which is awesome. amazing. Whoa. Yeah, so like we kind of mentioned, that one is on the horizon. Uh obviously we have no idea when it's going to happen right now, but please do send in those suggestions and keep it rolling and, and it'd be kind of awesome to do that. You know, periodically every, every once in a while, I think those episodes are a lot of fun and we got some mm-hmm. really good feedback on it. So uh, I, w- I was personally happy with it. Yeah, it was, it was great. And just, you know, trying to guess the tunes as well, even though like a, a lot of them, I think I was on the nose, but couldn't name them. So it was always good to just be able to. It's it's fun for us because then we have a chance to be like, yeah, is that is that a Mario game? Is that a Mario game or is that a Zelda game and all that? So I mean, <laughs> I was I was kind of intentionally trolling you guys with some of the ordering there too. Oh yeah, but next time, uh, we're not sure exactly how it's going to be, but next time, uh, one of the other two is actually going to curate the music, so I'm going to get to play along too. So it should be yes. I'm mm-hmm. looking forward to that. Should be a good time. Also wanted to touch on something. So we discussed last podcast, and and this is probably going to come out after it would be useful for anyone, but do want to mention it. (laughs) Uh, We discussed last podcast that we were going to run a tournament on the NES online service. Uh, That actually is happening this Saturday. So like I said, you're probably listening to this after Saturday. Sorry you missed it. But if you were checking our Twitter, like I recommended, you'd you probably competed and won it. So congratulations to you. So with that, actually we decided to make a, our own discord channel and the, the the link to the discord channel will be in the show notes. It is on our Twitter. Uh, We would love for you guys to check us out so far. That's been a really fun time. We have channels in there such as Holy shoot where (laughs) you post your favorite gaming moments such as rocket league goals or just news and updates that you think are cool or or whatever whatever is a holy shoot moment for you right <laughs> and then we have the five feet away channel where you yeah. get to post selfies or things that are five feet away mostly cat pictures so far <laughs> which is always welcome and uh, you know just to step back a little bit we i also did posts on instagram with our nintendo jump podcast account so we have the Discord link on our Instagram bio, So, and we also did announce and remind people that we do have the NES Online Open Tournament that Daryl just mentioned, so you know, definitely, hopefully, we can get a, a bigger turnout, because we so far we got, you know, quite a number of entrants, and, uh, you know, it's, it's always going to have more, so, you know, if you guys want to join for that $20 uh, e- eShop code, I mean, that'd be great. <laughs> There you go. So, no, it's it's going to be a fun time, but even after that, this is something that we kind of plan on continuing from time to time in, in various games, especially, you know, Smash is looming, and I have mm-hmm. so many tournament ideas for, for this upcoming Smash Brothers. So, you know, definitely stay tuned to us and our Twitter. We'll try to give you more warning next time. This one just kind of was an opportunity, and then it should be a fun time. So mm-hmm. we I, I've been enjoying our, our little Discord channel. So with that, we actually have a couple topics planned, but the first one is kind of an easy segue into this, and we're actually going to talk about the NES Online service. So I know we've been playing a little bit of that, so let's talk about Kevin. Uh, what, what do you like about the service? What, what are you playing right now? So right now, I've been getting the rust off of Tech Mobile for me, 
and I did start playing Super Mario Bros. 3 for like the a millionth time, <laughs> but this time I am not using any whistles or warps or anything. I'm just going through Ooh, level by level, nice. and I'm making a challenge to myself where I just cannot, I can't do a game over, and I want to see how high of a score I can get. So it's always nice to do something, some, something like that just because, you know, for me, I want to be able to just, you know, enjoy all the levels and just relive my childhood because I remember, you know, way back then when I was playing on the NES with all the the hours spent playing Super Mario Bros. 3. And actually, I didn't have Tech Mobile, to be honest. I played it until way later in my life. Hmm. But with that being said, you know, it's it's one of my, if not my favorite game of all time, just because of the nostalgia and, you know, just the things that, you know, like just the worlds that has that they've built for me, you know, with the Hills Have Eyes, which, you know, which I mentioned is not, <laughs> it's not a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're four years old, you're like, oh, man, like. It definitely <laughs> looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and, you know, a lot of times, you know, with all the other class, the, with the games that I played before with NES, like, you know, it's, it's just, there's just always that charm with it. And with the NES classics that we have, Tech Mobile, as I've mentioned, I played it a lot later in my life and, and then I get to play it again. And man, I, I love using the LA Raiders though, man, it's, it's pretty dope. And, you know, <laughs> I, I would, I just, oh, Jackson. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And I just, I just run with it for days. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's a running team. And of course, God <laughs> gives some love to, you know, Dan Marino from the Miami Dolphins. You know, he has quite an arm and really good passing <laughs> plays. But yeah, I actually played with one of our, one of the new people in our Discord last night just for a bit. And then we played some ice hockey, which I'm <laughs> not that good at because I, uh, to be honest, I'm not really good with ice hockey uh, in the NES in that game just because like i haven't really played as much daryl it seems like you've i've heard that you've been playing quite a bit of ice hockey oh man i have and yeah it's one of those games i never had the game when i was a kid i never played it i was a i was a blades of steel guy Mm -hmm. uh and playing it now has made me realize that i was really stupid as a kid because oh no it's such a good game like it is so much fun i've been I've been really enjoying um, a couple games from the system. Ice Hockey is definitely one of them. It's, it's just it's just one of those games that it more so than most of the other sports games on the the service. It really captures a lot of the fun of the sport, and it doesn't take itself too seriously. You can get in fights, and whoever mashes a the fastest, the other team <laughs> gets a penalty, and you go on a power play. It's just they they've done a lot to just take the sport actually be fairly. I mean, it's not realistic, but you know, it does follow right. the actual <laughs> hockey rules and such. But not, it's not realistic to the point that it's not fun. It, it's just, it's one of those kind of great old games. I've never, I never got the chance to play it. I'm playing it now. I love mm. that it has online. I've been playing against a, a ton of different people. Nice. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. The other one that's really been standing out to me recently, it's one I, I have played before and I, I've liked it for a while, but I've been playing a lot of Balloon Fight, actually. Oh, you you know what? I, I gotta be honest. I actually have never played Balloon Fight before. Oh, my. oh we gotta I, fix I, that. I, I, we gotta fix that. You know, I've seen the videos. I've seen the the footage. I just, I've I've never played it before. I mean, and I I feel like this is a crime. <laughs> so I gotta start playing. <laughs> no, nah, well, I played it before, but I've mostly played it single player in the past. Okay. What I was missing was the multiplayer is utterly fantastic. Like really, really good. In that, you can play it kind of two different ways. You can try to work together and clear the screen and kind of progress as far as you can in the game. Or you can play it competitively and be chasing each other around trying to pop each other's balloons. And it's just, man, that's it's just a fun time. It's really adaptable to different people. It's easy to pick up and play. It's one of the games that I think kind of perfectly captures what the NES is. And, and that's, that's awesome. Um, Sergio, have you gotten a chance to play much? I played a couple of games. I played some Double Dragon, you know, classic, nice. uh, some Donkey Kong as well. Um, I happened to have a chance to play some River City Ransom for quite a little while, actually, with a friend of mine. So mm. we played co-op, and that felt pretty classic. I, I like the fact that, you know, the game allows you to hit each other either on accident or on purpose. So <laughs> yeah. there's no <laughs> distinction there. But, yeah, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I haven't played online yet. Um, I had a few questions for you guys as to sure. how it works. I I believe I heard that you're able to play either as just a cursor, like to point things out and 
and clap for the main player. But I believe there's also a way to switch the control to the other player. Is that correct? Yeah. And does mm -hmm. that apply for all the games? Yes. So oh, at wow. any point, you can go in the menu and switch player one and player two. So if it is a single mm. player game, actually, a uh, friend of the show, Dragon, and I were just playing a uh, New Game Plus version of, of Zelda uh, earlier today, actually. It's the first time I've spent any time in the second quest of Zelda. So it's that was a lot of fun because we're like trying to figure out how to get it through the dungeon, which requires a couple of kind of sneaky bomb placement so the other players mm -hmm. like trying to point at the wall they think might be the one that you blow up and it's just that was that was a surprisingly fun time but yeah any of the games you can switch control whenever you want oh nice but is it limited to two players yes okay mm. yeah so right now it's limited to two players uh there's a couple things i don't really like one is I've gotten some lag in these old games, which is kind of weird to Ooh, me because there's not that much going on. But there is a, they call it a low latency mode that seems to correct that. The problem I have with it is you turn, you have to turn it on every time you start a match with somebody. Mm. So it's mm. it's just kind of weird. It's a, it's not really bad. It's just kind of an annoying little thing because otherwise playing something like Dr. Mario with lag on, oh, goodness. Oh, my, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Is it like input lag or is this... Uh... Yeah, a little bit. Oh, man, that's, oh, that's the worst. And the other thing I want to say is I'm I'm pleasantly surprised by how fun the little floating hands are. Like, yeah. you can do <laughs> some really stuff. stupid stuff with that. And all it is, <laughs> all it is, it's mapped to the the right stick, right? So you're moving mm -hmm. the hand around with the right stick and you can clap when you, you push in the stick. And that's it. That That mm -hmm. is the entire mechanic. But what it leads to is like like i was saying in single player games you know if you know a mushroom is in that block that mario block you can point out hey this block without yeah. saying anything there is voice chat actually you can voice chat over it but yes haven't really experienced that in these games yet so you've got those little things or you've got i mean it even gets into the the competitive games you can like this one guy on on reddit brought it up and it's, it's hilarious he brought it up that when you're playing against somebody in Dr. Mario, you can actually take your hand and, and hold it over the <laughs> next pill <laughs> Whoa, that's coming right. down, and they can't see what's coming. And it's just, there. there's funny little stuff. And what it typically devolves into with me is like when I'm playing with somebody and, and some of the sports games have like a halftime show, right? Or, or uh, the hockey has, hockey oh, has a little oh, song man. where the Zambonis go across and such. And, Everybody I've played with to this point, without fail, has just gotten their little hand like doing little circles or following the zamponis. Right? It's, just, it's it's one of those stupid little things that just it's it's funny and it honestly it increases the enjoyment. So nice. that, that was a yeah. little bit of a surprise to me. Yeah, because it's not really needed. Like you know, you wouldn't think like when when you think about like playing these old games, you wouldn't think to have that sort of hand that you can use to just you know mess around. But it really does add a uh, a nice touch to the experience. So. Um, I, yeah, like last night I just figured out how to, you know, clap and I was like, well, okay, this is pretty cool. But yeah, I mean, are we, I got a question though. Are we getting more NES games for the, the catalog? Um, has there been any news about it? Cause I did see something on Facebook, but I wasn't really sure. I don't know if it was a rumor. Um, can you guys confirm that? Yeah, we are. What, what I, yeah, what I know so far is that they announced a list of all the games that are coming out by the end of the year, I believe. Okay. I don't think they have specified, you know, when each one is coming out or how the timing is going to work out. I know a lot of people, myself included, were expecting Metroid to be part of the initial oh. batch, and it isn't. So, you know, mm. it should be coming anytime. Yeah, so they've they've announced, like, month by month what you're expecting, and I can't, I can't list them off the top of my head. But October, mm. there's a few games that are coming. Uh, November, there's a few more games. December, there's a mm. few more games. They haven't said anything like if any old games on the on the service are going to fall off to make room for them or anything. I, I kind of doubt mm. it because that right. menu scrolls. So I, I kind of right. just bet they'll throw it on. They're not adding that many. But notably in October, they're adding uh, Super Dodgeball, which is another fantastic Ooh, multiplayer nice. game. nice. Yes. Got to play that. Uh, later this year, they're adding Ninja Gaiden, which is yes, awesome. oh, very good game. So very hard oh. game but and and like yes. you said metroid is coming so <laughs> there's a you know it if they kept at this it could be really cool obviously i think i and the rest of the world really want super nintendo games at some point yes like 
<laughs> F-Zero. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> By yeah. default. Don't even have to think about that one. <laughs> but, I mean, can you – online multiplayer Super Mario Kart. Uh, um, online multiplayer. Oh, goodness, if they could get some rights or, or change the naming of Tetris Attack. Yes. Yes. Oh, right. Man. So, and there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot. Oh, a lot of really classic Super Nintendo games. I'm hoping for that. But – Overall, I've come off pretty pleasantly surprised with how good this NES service has been. It's it's something that a lot of people were kind of down on, and with with fairly good reason. These are you know very much yes. rehashed games and and games that a lot of us have played or have not wanted to play for a number <laughs> of years, right? But I'll say you know if you haven't tried it, definitely give it a chance. And you know if you can find a Discord, ours is a good spot. Uh, if you find a, a, a community that you can actually play these games with, I think I think they're kind of universally a fun time. So it's mm. I, I've I've come out pretty positive on it, to be honest. Yeah. Yes, definitely. And I think a nice, a really nice surprise is the amount of third party yeah. games that are in the service already. Mm-hmm. And so you know that opens the possibilities. Let's say we're only stuck with NES games. Uh, even so, with, with with all the third party games that we could be getting, you know, there's a lot of potential there. Yeah, definitely. And man, like if they were to have like an S- NES catalog, I I think Super Mario Kart would be great, especially with two oh, yeah. player. Oh man, like I I I remember when I first got Super Mario Kart back in the day, you know, that and F Zero, like those were the two games that really defined my love for you know wacky racing games slash futuristic games, and it's just like. Yeah, futuristic racing games. It's just, oh man, I don't know. I, I, I'm not gonna. I don't want to have my expectations that high. So for now, I think that having, you know, the NES classics that we have here, it is pretty good so far. And just on the price alone, if you're you know paying twenty dollars a year, I mean that's pretty dang good. Holy shoot! Like, <laughs> I mean, yes, they're 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 old games, and you know they're not like offering any sort of like the newer indies yet but i mean you know playing old games playing like these like these games that bring out all the nostalgia and and the game that i should be playing soon balloon fight man i okay i will <laughs> definitely get to oh that yeah tonight. absolutely <laughs> and and i think it was smart what they did to to some extent you know to make some allowances nes games are kind of universally accepted like there are there are an entire oh, yeah, generation sure. of people who that is their video game like that is NES games were you know what they really came into gaming knowing and i'm not even talking about yeah. age here like you could argue that i'm one of those you know like mm. NES games have, have been around even after that system was kind of gone you know they they've had this way of holding on and it's just it's cool to see so the point I, I want to make, you know, even like my wife is playing Dr. Mario, like a lot of Dr. Mario and man, she's scary good too, but it, Ooh. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just cool to see, you know, it's, it's neat to see these are all fairly easy to pick up. There's only, I mean, there's two buttons, right? Mm-hmm. So there's not really going to be any complicated <laughs> mechanics really, but it's, they're fun. They're just fun and it's cool to see. So I got a question for you guys. You know, given that we have the NES Classics now, I, I do believe that they announced the NES controller Joy Cons. Is that something that you guys would be interested in getting uh, from the get go? Like, do you feel like it's a it's an, it's essential to have for the experience of playing NES games? Like, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, I definitely got them oh, nice. already. Sweet. I don't think it's Whoa. it's that you know they're not necessary, but they definitely add to the nostalgia to the to the experience in a way you know it's nice to if you're going to be playing these games you know go all out and, and play with a retro controller and mm-hmm. the fact that they're wireless and you can charge them right there on the switch that's pretty awesome yeah it was too expensive for me but i they definitely have my interest right like it was something that i actually considered for a little bit but you know 60 bucks to play nes games is just you know back in the day back in the day absolutely <laughs> right but at this point at this point <laughs> yeah. in my life eh. I don't know. They're cool, though. I, I really do like the design of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dragon actually asked us to talk about this a little bit, but the other side of this was, you know, what are your least favorite games on the system? So let's let's end with a downer. You know, what's so far of the games you've played, what has been like, eh. First of all, I just want to say shout yeah. out to Dragon. 
He is one of our awesome friends that we've known for a while. So, you know, cool guy, great competitor. Okay, so least favorite games. Okay, you mean from the catalog so far or just like nah, NES just what's game on general? there? Hmm. My least favorite. Man, that's tough. I don't know. Okay. All right. <laughs> I, I'm Sergio might be mad for, for me saying this, but um soccer. I, I'm sorry. It, it, yeah, I oh, think, okay. I think you mean <laughs> bad hockey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay, all right. Well, whew. I'm I'm saying that because so I've never really played the NES soccer game. And, you know, I played the Tech Mobile, I played the ice hockey, you know, pretty cool. And just, it feels nice. But when I played the soccer game, oh my goodness, it was sluggish. It felt atrocious. I had, you know, like, I understand that it's, I can see why, like, you know, the way they programmed it, like, just the players moving. and But, man, they're, like, moving like snails. And the way they kick yes. the ball. And it's just like, <laughs> oh, my. I, I feel like my life is slipping away. If you think away. that's bad, you should play baseball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's actually worse. Okay. Yo, no, you don't uh, have to, you don't have direct control of your outfielders, and they take like an hour to get to the ball. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, <laughs> All right, well, can I just like skip that? <laughs> but, okay. Uh, you know what? You know what? I, I just okay. Baseball and soccer. Well, I gotta try the baseball game, but man, like, oh gosh, I Sergio, what is your least favorite game? Uh, I guess I agree with soccer. I mean, I haven't played a lot of them yet to know. I'm, for some reason, I thought you were going to say Yoshi, and I was going to fight oh, you for that one oh, <laughs> because no, 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 I no. like Yoshi. <laughs> I, I So I, I had a feeling that if I were to say that, you might have been there. I was like, well, maybe you would. Maybe you might have had a different reaction if I said soccer because I know like, I know you love soccer. I, I, I like soccer too, but you're, you, know, you breathe it. You know, you got your teams and stuff and I all think, that. So I almost think the I almost think the more you like <laughs> soccer, the worse you'll like that game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's why I'm like, oh my god, like these guys are moving so slow. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just like, I'm not. And you know, when I say holy shoot, I don't mean I'm saying holy shoot. I'm saying holy bleep, and I'm like, dang it, like tough bleep. And so there's there's a right answer here, and clearly. Clearly, the worst game on the entire platform is Yoshi. No. Um, um, <laughs> to, to be honest, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of Yoshi. Just, oh. just whatever. Uh-oh, uh-oh, but uh-oh. it's weird. I have this, I have this strange, like, you, you guys have heard me say things like, this, this mechanic is stupid or this game is stupid. Actually, earlier in this episode, I, I said that about the, the stupid little hand things. That's actually a positive for me. <laughs> Right, yeah. so I actually view that as a good thing. So when I'm playing a game that is absolutely mechanically bad, like just bad, I still kind of like it just because it's funny to me. So even even the really rough games on the system, I'm kind of enjoying in in this weird curiosity kind of way. Like pro wrestling is just terrible, but it's <laughs> oh. really fun. So maybe it's not. I I don't know, but. Yeah, if I hands down, if I were picking a least favorite game on the count on the console, I'm sorry, it's Yoshi. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> uh, 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 oh, yo, Lieutenant Surge, gonna bring us right to you, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, d- don't don't hurt me. Man. <laughs> I just, I, I mean, Doctor Mario is right there. <laughs> so it's I mean, it's like three tiles it's, away. It's not that far. Yo, yeah, I I really like how. I can feel the anger built. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I really like how people have started talking about like stuff that's like so and so away. Like, you know, Nappy Ray, he's like, oh, yo, you know, this this thing is like five feet away from me, or it's three inches away. I'm like, oh, dang, okay. <laughs> it's, like, uh, it's oh, shout out to Nap Rat, you know, another awesome friend, cool guy. So had to mention that. Yeah, but I mean, I think I think that's about all we can talk about with the NES, unless you have any guy any other comments, you know. Are there any games that you're in particular hoping for? Is there anything that hasn't been announced that you'd really like to see oh, come to it? I got one right here, right now. Castlevania Three. Yes. All oh, fair. Nice. Yes. Yep. That is a classic, and hopefully they can have it by the end of the year. So that game and oh shoot, what other, you know what? What about you guys? What do you guys think? I'm waiting for Mario is Missing. That was a classic. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> I played it on the SNES. No. Oh, my goodness. Oh. 
I once rented that game. I was very disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I remember when my dad bought it for me, and I was so excited, like, oh, wow, Mario game. And then, you know, I was <laughs> – it was cool at first because then, I, you know, I, I'm in San Francisco. You know, I'm in New York. I'm in, you know, some city <laughs> in Africa, which I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. I totally forgot the name of the city in Africa that I'm in. And, some, and I think Moscow, Russia – but oh my goodness it, it was just like trying to figure out what to do and you know as a little kid you're just like oh man like like i, I mean yeah the music is cool and all but i just could not like <laughs> i didn't know how to play the game i was like man this is like ah, i don't know what do you <laughs> sergio what were, what were your what were your memories on mario's missing no it was it was the exact <laughs> same thing i rented it and i had no idea what was going on it was boring yeah, uh, in all seriousness uh, though i'm waiting for kung fu i actually oh, if it's not yes. there yet i'm surprised oh. yeah no it, and it hasn't been announced yet and that, oh man that yeah i played a lot of that game like way too much of that game uh, when i was a kid that's yeah, awesome it's a good one i honestly i would love to see either one of the contra games I'd be yes. fine with, with Contra oh, yes. or Super yes. C. It doesn't matter. Oh, uh, I played so many hours of Super C with my dad. So, you know, e- either one would be fine. I think that'd be a great online game, too. So, Oh, and Bubble Bobble. Yeah. Bubble Bubble. Yeah. Yes. Just to point Zelda out. Zelda 2. That is a good one. I, I used <laughs> to play quite a bit of Contra with one of my uncles back in the day, and we would just, like, just go at it, you know, co-op and just try to, you know, go through the levels, and it was really fun. But... But yeah, uh, Zelda Two would be great, and oh, I'm, draw- I'm drawing a blank. There's one more game, Star Topics. Star, yeah, Star Tropics. Yeah, that that is a game that I've never owned. I've heard a lot about. It's on the NES uh, Classic, or yep. the the one you can get for sixty dollars. Yep. And I, that's something that I've always wanted to play. And so if they can release that, I'm on it. I'm gonna jump to it. Nice. So. Mm-hmm. I actually think that's fairly likely too. Like a lot yes. of the ones we mentioned just now are not unlikely, so it could be cool. I, I'm I'm looking forward to to the future on this. We'll see exactly how it works out. Heck yeah! What about Back to the Future? Have you guys played the Back to the Future games? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What What about the Goonies too? You guys ever play that? Oh my goodness! I I have never played that game. It's actually really good. It's uh, really good. Uh, okay. So the other the other part of the online service that is kind of new and fresh is they went back and added voice chat to a lot of old games, which we knew was going to happen. Like they right. they advertised that with Mario Tennis and said it was going to come to other games. What they didn't tell us is that it's actually online voice chat with random people online. Whoa. Like I jumped into a online queue just randomly in mario kart and it popped up on my phone hey would you like to join voice chat so i did and it's amazing like so there's been a couple of sites reporting about it that it's almost kind of like the most wholesome voice chat you've ever seen now that said you are playing mario kart so some profanity is absolutely expected even though (laughs) there's a little pop-up that says please don't when you're you're entering it but the first yeah there is it pops out uh, wow that's Pretty it, awesome, it, actually. Yeah. Well, when you load the service, it says, "Hey, please don't use profanity." This oh, is okay. Okay. <laughs> you're playing a child's <laughs> game. I mean, this is not. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I thought that maybe like while you're playing, you you know you sh- shout some expletives, and then immediately like something pops out and screen, like, "Hey, you're cussing!" Oh, that'd be cool. like... <laughs> no, no, it's not like that. Uh, but I, and I'll, I'll say the first race I got in, uh, it seemed like one of the one of the people in the room was actually like a, a room of like fraternity brothers or something like that. So oh. that was, that was a little colorful and I, I ended up <laughs> muting them and then enjoying it with, with, with the rest of the people. So nice. Uh, it's, it's cool. And it's, it's something that I did not in any way expect. I never expected this. And I've heard it got added to Mario tennis as well. So you can talk to the person you're playing against. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know this, but I would assume it was added to arms too. No, so, it was. Yes. I don't know. It, it's something I didn't expect. So, Kind of cool. Have you guys tried it at all? I haven't yet, but honestly, when I've been, as I've played Mario Tennis Aces recently uh, for the past few days, I've I've got the notification on my phone like every now and then about like, hey, you can use Nintendo, you know, this Nintendo Online app to, you know, talk to other people. I'm like, whoa, okay, but I I never haven't tried it yet. But it sounds like a pretty cool thing, and I would like to 
you know, be able to talk to my opponents <laughs> at another dimension. So, you know. what were you, Sergio? No, nothing yet. Um, I'm kind of more interested in trying it out with the NES games, you know, with mm-hmm. our friends. Yeah, I haven't done that yet, and it seems like it might be fun. Actually, I'm lying. I did play. I did play hockey with voice chat. So, <laughs> Ooh, okay. going back to hockey. Shout out to hockey. Okay, hockey man. <laughs> you know what? I I need to get better at that game. I, I I I feel like right now I'm like really bad, but like I've I've started to play a bit more, and I, I'm just gonna try to work my way up and. And we should play, Daryl. We should play one of these days, but but not 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 not, not yet. <laughs> hey, I'm giving I'm giving you two sets of homework here: one hockey, two balloon fight. Oh, okay. You 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 just get back to me, okay? I, you know what? Roger that. I will, especially with balloon fight, because I feel like I'm doing myself a disservice not playing that game yet. So mm, that's all I got. <laughs> that's all we got. So with that, we're actually going to jump into the second topic. So. This was actually kind of, it was one that we've been planning for a little bit so far, and when we initially suggested it, one game popped into my mind. So, what we're going to talk about is our favorite games that nobody ever played. So, basically, this is an underrated or underselling games discussion of, you know, we really like these games, but we kind of feel on an island with it. So... For me, the game that popped in my mind when we were going to talk about this was instantly Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, which now I'm not going to talk about. So <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I'll I'll save my responses a little bit. Uh, let's start with Sergio. You got something? Yeah. Yes, definitely. So, I mean, I'm, if I'm ranking them, this is my favorite game that nobody has played. Like out of any amounts that I could list, this is the one. So it is called The Dog Island, and it's a game that was released on 2008 for the PS2 and the Wii. I played it on the Wii. It was developed by a company called Ukes or Ukes and published by Ubisoft. I don't really know if they're around anymore of, of what they're working on, but... So the game is based on the dog artist collection. Um, you might have seen it or remember. It's been a while, mm-hmm. but it was basically a group of photographs of dogs that are taken with like a fisheye lens. So they look kind of chibi and they have like huge noses. Does that ring a bell maybe? <laughs> Not really. Yeah, I'm, I'm wish, trying to picture it. I wish it could, but yeah, I've honestly never heard of this game before. So, <laughs> But, you know, it, the, just the name itself sounds very intriguing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely. So... You you know you play as a dog. You get to to choose from a whole bunch of different breeds. I was a Siberian Husky, pretty cool. <laughs> so the game the game throws you right into the middle of a crazy story. And yeah, the game has a story as as insane as it sounds. You know, I, I want people to play this game, so I kind of want to keep spoilers to a minimum. But basically, your little dog is sick, and nobody knows what the illness is or how to cure it. So you're that dog <laughs> has been away for a year looking for a cure and you haven't heard anything so you decide to go on your own and, and mm-hmm. try to find a cure from there the, the story gets crazy you end up uh, in a shipwreck on your way to the dog island uh, you have to you have to work your way around and then you meet a, a dog called dr potan <laughs> i mean it, it seems at that point that he's going to be able to save your your sibling, but he is unable to. You have to become a sniff master. <laughs> this is so <laughs> sad. <laughs> you have to become a sniff master and find the legendary mm. flower. And, I mean, that's just the surface of it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, you meet this little, like, a flea character. It's called an ank. And it turns out there's an ank world, and it's collapsing with the dog world because the dogs are not in touch with nature as much as they used to be so i mean just just <laughs> just mellow in on that for a little bit and that's just the surface of this whole crazy thing dang All right, you know what i'm writing yeah. this one down dog island <laughs> heck yeah so how does it play basically it's like a zelda game but very basic very like a casual laid back zelda game in a way you know you have your health bar it's made of three hearts and there's side quests there's towns and there's a lot of side quests to do in, in little things like you can, as you gain sniffing abilities, you become able to find fossils, mm-hmm. fruit, you can go fishing. There's also enemies that you have to either fight or, you know, if they're small enough or bigger ones like bears or other bigger animals, you kind of have to just like scare them away or lure them away from where you need to go. So yeah, like it's very sophisticated for like a, 
basically a lot of people consider it like a kid's game and i think that's why pretty much everybody nobody <laughs> played it because of course you know you see these cute little dogs in in this sort of very basic looking game but man there's a lot to it and it's a lot of fun it's actually pretty long and one of the highlights for me definitely is the soundtrack it has really good music a lot of acoustic guitar it sounds really nice <laughs> and it changes a lot depending on on the environments in the game like the desert the forest and there's caves too so there's a lot here and that you ha you also have a lot of accessories to dress up your dog with i was wearing a, a red handkerchief and a top hat i mean <laughs> how cool is that <laughs> <Pretty> classy <laughs> did you just say earlier that your your dog can like scare away a bear <laughs> did i hear that correctly yes. <laughs> how, how does that work because like i'm trying to picture in real life and i don't i can't think of a situation where that has actually happened <laughs> oh no it's it's happened it's absolutely happened it's, oh, I mean, there's I, videos of cats scaring away bears so yeah oh really wow yeah, man yeah. i must be living on the rock because i or maybe i'm thinking of like a big bear like a grizzly bear or like a i mean <laughs> i don't know but that's interesting i all right, now I got another thing to do. Look up <laughs> YouTube videos of dogs <laughs> scaring bears. Oh, man. Shout out to dogs. <laughs> and cats. Oh, man. So, yeah, I mean, definitely there's a lot here. And, and it's like, you know, the, the developers went on and they were thinking, nobody's going to play this game. Let's just go nuts with a crazy, sophisticated story. And it's definitely here. It definitely delivers. And... You know, you're always asked, like, what's your impossible sequel? Like, what game would you want a sequel for that you know it's never going to happen? This is mine. <laughs> Fair enough. Honestly. Mm. Yeah. What about A Dog Island 2? So there's there's no sequel for it? It's just... Nothing. No rumors. I even... Back then, I emailed the developer. I didn't hear back, so... Oh, man. <laughs> They're like, we have a fan. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, man. Lieutenant Surge. But... They could make the cat island, I, I guess, but but you know what? We're gonna get that. I don't know. For some reason, it reminds me of that that goose game that we're gonna get the <laughs> for the switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> kind of remind me, remind me of that. But you know, for the music, is it does it kind of remind you of Animal Crossing? Is it kind of like funky? Is it kind of you know very poppy, or is this um, what what sort of like melodies does it employ? Uh, it definitely does, like for the town area or okay. like the the beginning of the game where everything is nice and and fun and and you're just making your way towards the dog island. Yeah, for sure. And then in the desert, like I said, it, it really matches the mood of the game and the areas that you're in. Like it's it's a really really good soundtrack. It's awesome, man. I gotta look this up right after this. Yeah, <laughs> like th definitely, definitely. There's there's boss fights. There's a gang of Thug dogs that are causing <laughs> havoc in town. Like, there's a lot here. Yeah. No. Th Did you say thug dogs? <laughs> the heck? All right. Yo, that's... <laughs> now, is it on other platforms, like on Steam or like any, like. No, no. Oh. It just, you know, PS2 and Wii. It worked really well in the Wii. You would only use the Wii Remote and it was all pointer based. It worked really well, though. It was very simple, but it worked. Wow. Man. I can't find my Wii. Dang it. <laughs> hmm. I, I don't even know what to say right now. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, man. Oh, the dog island. Man, it's like, it's got one of the best things in the world. Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. There's some, uh, there's a Let's Plays by the Game Grumps. I don't know if they play the whole thing, but, you know, if you, if you don't mind that kind of humor and you want to check some of it out, yeah, definitely check it out. Oh, I like one of the the people from Game Grumps, um, Eagle Raptor. Uh, yes, is, yes. Oh, just that one guy's, though. Just one, just one. Yeah. <laughs> the other Sorry, guys are John. jerks. Sorry, John, <laughs> and whoever is, uh, you know, we apologize. I and I say that because you know, with Eagle Raptor, I really like the way he analyzed you know games like Mega Man and the Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time. Yep. Like he he put a lot of effort into you know really diving into into nitty gritty. So. You know, props to him. So shout out to Eagle Raptor, man. I'm always looking forward to your next video, which hopefully will come soon. But I don't know when, but let us know because we're an intelligent <laughs> podcast and we really want a new video. So, <laughs> okay, that that's all I got for that one. <laughs> Dog Island is $11 on Amazon right now. Whoa. Ooh. It's rated three and a half stars. You know, <laughs> stop about the rating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
two thumbs up, man. I mean, no, I'm seriously gonna check it out. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to too. Oh my goodness, I just, oh, I, I, I'm gonna. I think watching the Let's Plays will be a great way to just get in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, Kevin, top that. <laughs> oh man, I don't think I can, unfortunately. So, Sergio, you got me on this one because. The game that I'm going to talk about, it's definitely not as quirky and, I guess, fun in in a way in a way of just you know having that that sort of environment that you have. It's it's a bit well. No, let me take that back. I'm gonna I don't want I don't <laughs> want to send that tone. I think it's a different kind of game. So Sergio, you got that game, which is awesome, The Dog Island, which we're going to check out. But you guys have already heard me talk about this from two episode, uh, you know, with two episodes prior uh, in different that. Well, yeah in different for the year. But anyway, so I'm going to talk about Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky. That is my pick, and it is one of the best JRPG G series I've ever played in my life, even though, oh, I, wow. should, even though I should play the third one. Uh, there's three games in total. There's the first <laughs> chapter, second chapter, and the third chapter. Uh, I still think I played the third one, but the first chapter is the one I'm going to talk about. It's by the the people who made the Yeez series, the YS, uh, mm-hmm. Neon yep. Fal- Falcom, if I'm saying it correctly, Neon yep. Falcom, and you know it's it's awesome because you ha- it has a really nice story. Basically, you know the story begins with you know this this girl named Estelle Bright. You know she has a father Cassius who's, who's this really awesome warrior, and then one night he brings home a young boy by the name of Joshua, and then you know he. And it's, it's cool because this guy, Joshua, he's an assassin. Like, he, he kills people, and he's had this really horrible past. But then when Cassia has brought him in, you know, he stopped doing that stuff. And then basically Joshua becomes adopted into the family. So it's so Estelle has a brother. And five years later, so now they're, you know, they're teenagers, and they basically want to become bracers, which are people, they're members of a guild that handles all different sorts of jobs, mostly investigation and combat. So and they do that to obviously just maintain the the peace amongst the land, you know, make sure everything's all good, no disturbances. So that's the start of the story. And you basically go through your journey as, you know, Estelle and Joshua, and then you pick up, you know, you meet people along the way who are other bracers, and then you have your teacher bracer and, or excuse me, your senior bracer. And just be able to play with these people. Yeah, excuse me, not play. <laughs> I'm playing with the game, but you get, you be able to, uh, you know, just go on an adventure with these people and solve all these problems that are going on around the land and fight these big monsters and all that. It's, it's just give a high level, and the combat system is really awesome. It's it's like a it's like a grid, and you know, on the upper left hand corner, you'll have like you get to see who's going to take their turn next and basically mm-hmm. you know it'll 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 divvy up depending on how fast your character is and how fast the opponents are or the monsters and there's three stats so every character has three stats or three th- three bars that you will see at the bottom there's the HP there's the EP and there's a the CP so HP like you hit points EP I think it's energy points and then the CP is their craft points so craft points is pretty much like the character special ability so once it, it ranges from zero to two hundred, and once you get to a hundred, you can execute something like a limit break in Final Fantasy VII. Hmm. Super dope. The animations are very crisp, uh, and you know this game is—it's a fourteen-year-old game, so it was made uh, in two thousand four, and I started hearing about it from Kotaku's Jason Schreier. He had an article. Um, actually, I have it right here. One of the best JRPGs comes to PC next week. And he posted on July twenty second, two thousand fourteen. I I bookmarked this article because I remember this is the ar- this is the thing this is the one article that <laughs> just wow got me into this JRPG and I instantly bought on Steam and I spent a good fifty one hours on it and like with the first chapter it's just an amazing game that the soundtracks are awesome you heard sophisticated fight as I, you know, we played from the music episode. And there's one more called Challenger Invited, which pretty much goes like, 
It just keeps going to a point, and it's just—it's really, yo, know, like this music is dope because it's—it's it's jazzy. You know, if it's it's poppy, it reminds me of like the the bands I used to listen to, like M4, which is a J J pop hip hop band back in the day. So shout out to M4 if you're listening. Verbal, I got you. You know, he's a cool rapper. Anyway, I going off sidetrack, but it, it's just, if you want a well-rounded game that isn't that well-known, it's that is that will give you the charm, the stories, and there's even the characters too, like, there's one character named Olivier, yeah, or Olivier, Oliver, yeah, Olivier, and like, he, he has a really interesting way of talking, he's like, oh, well, you know, and the force of the river will come and catch my love in a, in a basket full of flowers, it's something crazy what? like that, yeah, it's, I, I'm I'm trying to remember the exact quote, but it's just like a bunch of words that just somehow flow well, and he tries to hit on like you know women. It's like and and some and actually sometimes men. So it's like you know both sides, and it's like man, this <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty engaging, man. Like wow, like it's you know there are a good number of characters that you can use to uh, to fight. There's one who uses like two sources, Joshua, and there's one with the Still uses like this this pole, super cool. And yeah, it's like I honestly I recommend this game to anybody. Like just whoever who wants or to people who are JRPG fans, especially, just because, you know, it's got that charm and you're gonna be playing it. Like fifty hours is a pretty good length. Uh for the second chapter is well, I'm on I have hundred and twenty two hours hundred and twenty two hours on it so far. Ooh. I am five percent away from being the game. I just have to fight like <laughs> a few more bosses, but man, anyway, so The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky first chapter. It is a masterpiece. Y you know, I'm going to send you guys the link of just the trailer that I saw that just really got me into it. So besides the article, I'll send you that too. So and then man, like it just opens with this super epic like this music score and just like transitions back and forth and you know, the improvements they made on the PC, so that got me too. So Hmm. And that was one of the yeah so yeah uh at a time when i wasn't playing that many rpgs in general besides child of light you know i which is a, another one which we can talk about in the next episode but or another episode but anyway it is just a really good game a really good RPG, rpg and i just i can't recommend it enough i spent 20 minutes straight one night with a friend talking about this game because he one night he was asking me oh what games do you play oh i played this one game and i just over dinner just like talked about 20 minutes straight like i couldn't stop and i i felt so bad I was like oh god this is so one-sided <laughs> but <laughs> but he was curious about it and, and i just like man i was just like flowing like the river so anyway that's my game <laughs> I, I know i've been talking quite a bit you guys have any questions about that <laughs> well no i just, i want to say one thing that you just so we've We've been naming our, our Discord channels after things that people have said. I just came up with the name of our a new channel where people can submit their own music that they like from video games. It's going to be called Yo, This Music is Dope. Yo, <laughs> I love that bleep. That's, that's awesome, man. I love so, that shit, man. Thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> All right, cool. Man, and that's shout, awesome. out, sh shout out to Child of Light, which is coming to Switch and is actually an inter interesting game as well. <laughs> wait, what? It's coming out of Switch? Yes, it is. I didn't know. Yo, wait, nice. I, didn't, I didn't know that. Wait, when blah, 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 blah. When did that happen? When did they announce it? Uh, I'm not sure. Let me look up when it's coming. Yo, no way. Are you... nice. Oh, my goodness. I, I got to step five feet away now, man. This is crazy. Are you <laughs> serious? You really... What? And they have teased Child of Light 2. So... <laughs> yeah, so... Uh... Wow. Early, early in August, uh, August 8th is what I'm seeing, they announced that Child of Light and Valiant Hearts are both coming to N Nintendo Switch. Oh, my God. Wait, Valiant Hearts. Is that the World War One game? Yes, it is. Oh, my goodness. Another classic that you guys should play. <laughs> actually, actually, I have, I have really, really cool news for you in particular. Uh, Child of Light is coming to Nintendo Switch in two weeks. October oh, 11th. Wow. Oh, my God goodness you know blarg what what holy man okay 
So wow, this is a great episode so far. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. Okay. Well, there you have it. Child Light. Gotta play it. Watercolor style, art style, JRPG, made by one of the subsidiaries of Ubisoft. Yep. If I'm saying it correctly, and yeah, it's and they tease Child Light too. Nice. Done. They've heard really good things. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Okay, well, th- well, thank you, Daryl. Man, I appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> holy shoot, that is dope. <laughs> all right, well, that's all I got to say about that's all <laughs> the I got. That's all I got. <laughs> all right, so that's that's gonna jump back to me. And all right, so uh, when, like, I, like I mentioned, when we were talking about doing this episode originally, the first thing that came to mind was Crystal Chronicles. Actually, I. It, I built the episode for that. Like I said, I'm not going to talk about that, but I am going to talk about it's. Uh, I'm, I'm going to call it it's it's brother game. Uh, <laughs> it was kind of in the same sinking ship that that Crystal Chronicles was, and that was the Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures. Mm-hmm. Now I I know that this is not a game that nobody has played. Actually, probably quite a few people have played, but in my opinion, not nearly enough people have played it. Agreed. Agreed. So mm-hmm. really. Like, this game was, to me, the epitome of what a multiplayer Zelda game should be. It's a it's a top-down Zelda game, kind of in this style of, like, A Link to the Past and things like that. But it was on GameCube, so it had kind of Super Nintendo-style graphics, but the music was much better, the graphical effects were much better. So especially when you had, like, fire or things around it looked really cool. And Mm -hmm. it was another game that you had to have the Game Boy Advances and Link Cables. So you could split off from each other. Like The idea is everybody's controlling their own Link. And you could split off from each other and go in different ways. And if you went into a cave, then you would show up on the Game Boy Advance, which was cute. I mean, it was a a neat little concept. But again, you, you just put a huge price tag on this game, so... There were single player modes where you controlled all the links, not nearly as good as, as just getting a, a friend or two or, or three mm-hmm. to play it. And this is a game that I kind of see being kind of revived on Switch. Not maybe not exactly this game. Like on 3DS, they did have uh, Zelda Triforce Heroes, which is kind of similar. Mm-hmm. Not as good in my opinion but hey it was it was a fun time right it was it was a good game so i'm really hoping one of these games makes an appearance on switch i don't i really don't see a reason it wouldn't and do give it the crystal chronicles treatment throw online play in there please I, it would be amazing so that's that's the one that i'm really hopeful for actually nice and you know what just to add a, a bit to what you say into the underrated or overlooked part of this game specifically and, and to disagree with you a little bit i myself really really enjoy the single player so i did mm, play sure. this game multiplayer right like i played part of the beginning and part of like closer to the end so not the whole thing but i did play the whole thing single player and i man i really liked it um i'm sure you know this but maybe some of the listeners don't there are parts in the single player game that are different because it's single player so Mm -hmm. you still control all the links in just in different timing Mm -hmm. um, or in different locations like you leave them here and they kind of freeze there and you control the other ones it was a lot of fun it's almost kind of a kind of a pikmin game when you play it that way it's it's yeah it's neat and i'm not trying to say the single player was bad it really wasn't but i i think that the highlight really was the I, i really liked the multiplayer stuff Mm. Yeah, definitely. I guess uh, I'm trying to say like there's kind of two packages there in a way. Like yeah, yeah. Th- don't don't dismiss one or the other for sure. Also, what I liked is it was as you progress in the story, you opened up. I forget exactly what they called it, but it was basically this this mini game tower that had a bunch of mm-hmm. a bunch of multiplayer mini game type things, whether it's like horse racing or uh, trying to get the most rupees as quickly as possible. Uh, speaking of getting rupe- rupees, this is maybe the best example I can think of of this cooperative but competitive play. <laughs> yes, mm. where I mean it's it's equal parts trying to beat this really hard boss together and trying to traverse through the level and no that rupees might no give it back. No. <laughs> I'm going to toss you in the lava because why not, yes. right? So 
<laughs> yeah, this game was special, and and I'm I'm ready for another one. I, I think it'd be really cool on Switch. Uh, Kevin, you ever play any of the multiplayer Zelda games? Honestly, I played a little bit like back in high school, but not to a point where I would play like every day. It was just one of those times like when we like during just in between classes, like you know, I would I didn't know the game, so I actually played on my my friend's Game Boy, and then we just, we just be playing. So it was cool. I just never, uh, you know, I, honestly, I, I wish I got more into it back then. But yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah. Uh, same same question in, a, in well, similar question in, in the same way. Have either of you ever played a multiplayer Metroid game? I have not. I didn't I, even know that was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think I played the multiplayer in Metroid Prime Two once. I don't remember liking it <laughs> but uh, the one in nintendo land was a lot of fun yeah it was uh specifically the one that, that came comes to mind and who boy this game got a lot of hate uh metroid prime federation force on 3ds Whoa. but that sounds oh, like a cool yes. game though that huh. game it the way it was announced and and marketed was just wrong for what the market was there, there hadn't mm. been a new metroid game for a long time and then this is what they show off and people are were really upset so if you no. probably to this day the initial trailer is like downvoted to intern eternity on on youtube and <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. it's 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 kind of sad because it's actually a really cool game like right. i got it and i played with people and i played all the way through the campaign and what they were trying to do with this was a squad based first person cooperative shooting mission game so you play as as the federation force which are the kind of the the no-name soldiers within the the metroid universe fighting like these giant bosses and and things that you have fought as samus but you know you'll have different things like trying to capture monsters and uh trying to you know beat them back into a cage and then somebody has to shoot the button to close the cage and Right. right every every mission was really different I typically found them to be really cool. So, <laughs> you know, everybody knew about the game because everybody seemed to hate it. But honestly, <laughs> I thought it was a really cool game. So kind of also deserves in the in the kind of offshoot multiplayer Nintendo games that also kind of deserves to be <laughs> offshoot, but to be there. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> All right. Uh, Sergio, you got another one. Yes, I do. It's an old game. For the Game Boy slash Game Boy Color, you know, it was one of those rare games that was a black cartridge. Basically, if you played it on the Game Boy, you know, it looked fine. But if you played it on a Game Boy Color, you had a a, a little bit of colors, but you can play it on both systems. Right. So the game is called Dragon Dance. In shout out to Dragon, oh. of course. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo, Dragon Man. <laughs> yep. And I have talked to him about this game. Of course. <laughs> so <laughs> this game came out in 2000 and basically it's a breakout clone. You know, um, one of the most popular ones is Arkanoid. So this is w- sure, one of sure. those. And I mean, it's it's simple, but it has a lot of cool things going for it. So uh, first of all, you, you play as a dragon and you have a lot of different cool abilities. Like you can spill, split the ball into three so you do more damage and you, you break out more uh, blocks. You could also shoot fire uh, yourself as a dragon or you could turn the ball into fire so it would be, you know, it would break it straight <laughs> down through the blocks. Mm-hmm. Uh, the game has 100 stages. Every 10th stage is a boss fight. So, I mean... Before this, I hadn't heard of uh, bosses in, in like a breakout type game, so right, right. it was a lot of fun. Cool little things like you were able to customize the color of the background on the screen. If you know, if you wanted to do that, it was cool, and the music was good as well. Uh, the ball physics were really cool. Like, if you pressed the D pad ever so slightly when the ball was hitting you, like you had perfect control of where the ball was gonna go. So oh, interesting. Yeah, lots of little things, and and you know, it was. I'm pretty sure not a lot of people know about it, so definitely, I don't. I mean, it, it was never in the virtual console like on the 3DS back when Boo. there were a couple of Game Boy games there. So I, it's gonna be very hard to find, but if you ever find it, and I'm, I'll, I'll be surprised if it's more than five dollars if you ever find it. Definitely pick it up if you're able to play it. Dang, a boss fight and breakout. I mean, that's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whoa. No, right. That sounds cool, man. Kevin, you got another one? 
I do actually. I do. Oh man. Yeah, I got y'all got a good one. I got a good one. I now have you guys ever played Heroes of Maya Magic Three? Was that the DS game? Uh, no, no. Well, maybe. I it, I don't know if it That's what on I DS. thought of too, yeah. Maybe. Well, it's a PC game, but it's it, it's like a turn-based strategy game. It's like I guess think of like Age of Empires sort of, but but more in the sense of, you know, you have your Okay, so basically the official title is Heroes of My Magic 3: The Restoration of Erathia or just known as Heroes 3, and it's you know, this is actually my first foray into strategy games. So this released in 90, 1997, oh, excuse me, 1999. And when I visited some relatives overseas, they introduced me to this game. And like, I swear we would play it every single night when I was on vacation. <laughs> it was super addicting because basically you would have, so you'll have campaigns where you get to start and you get to be, you get to set up your own base. So there's like different bases or towns like castle or tower, inferno, dungeon, stronghold, and etc. And every town can produce its own creatures, its own units. Uh, and basically you start with a hero. Okay, so your hero is like your main guy or, or girl. And your hero can, can you know, bring units with him or her and be able to traverse around the region, around the world, or just that land area, and be able to go to different towns and either conquer them or, you know, try to get that, that treasure depending on your campaign objective. And it was really, it it, it, se- it may seem a bit complicated, but it's, it's actually super simple to learn. Like, just as you go, you get to, you know, get more resources. And then, man, like, so you have your hero with his or her units, and then, there's gonna be other heroes, like like rival heroes, or just like the bad guys. They they will try to find your town, and you can actually have your own set of units defending your your castle or your dungeon, and basically just you know. So then there's this battle sequence where you'll have your units, and depending on how many units you have of each, that's gonna be the number that you will see. Like for example, you'll you'll probably have like maybe five archmen, so you'll sh- you'll show five, and then. It, it'll go into combat and then depending on how fast you know the units are you, you'll you can deal damage to each other's units and then your heroes can have these spells that there are special abilities that you can use to you know maybe bolster your units or like you know try to give the other opponent or the rival units like some sort of obstacle that they have to overcome like maybe some sort of like debuff or something like that and it, it's a pretty it's a it's a really nice strategy classic and you know it actually got a lot of acclaim back then. I don't know who else is talking about this game nowadays because <laughs> I only know like two of my friends who uh, love this game just as much as I do, if not more. And like, it is the reason why I got into that turn-based strategy type of game. Like, I think without this game, I mean, I would be missing quite a number of games in my library that I would have never played. So, Heroes of My Magic Three, you guys should definitely check it out. It's actually on Steam. There's a HD version. Which I heard wasn't it wasn't as good as the original. I think there there might have been some sort of like some sort of thing that they messed with the graphics. But but mm. you should still play it. Or <laughs> if you can get the original, that'd be great. And uh, yeah, turn based strategy game. You can play multiplayer too. So basically, you can have like different friends be able to play in the same map, the same campaign, or just like free for all and just try to conquer each other, try to get all these units and try to beat each other up and ba boom ba blam and using magic and you know, like punches and kicks and all that is, it's really fun. And, you know, it's, ah, oh, it, it's, it's probably my favorite <laughs> strategy game of all time. Like, you know, in the, in the, you have like the age of, you, you know, age of empires and you have like other strategy games, but this one is like the, the pinnacle. No, and cool. I wish, yeah. Um, have you guys played other strategy games similar to heroes of my magic three before? Well, I mean, it looks like they've they've actually continued the series, so they're up to, I guess, if I'm reading this right, they're up to seven, which was released in 2015. Th- that is correct. However, however, uh, it they're I heard that they're not as good as as three. I don't know why. I don't know why. It's I mean, I <laughs> I played a little bit of five, and I could I'm like ah, oh, I guess, but maybe it's the charm. Maybe it's just the the formula that. Heroes three employed, but I mean, yeah. still, 
Every so, Fire Emblem game I, I play is still uh, compared to Fire Emblem Game Boy Advance. And you know what? That is the standard, and it's a very common thing to have these sort of games where the older games are better. Um, well, better is subjective. I mean, by they just, they just hit you better, especially when, <laughs> right. like, at this point, when I go into a Fire Emblem game, I kind of, okay, all right, this is the dude that does this. All right, this is the guy that does that. <laughs> and here's the, oh, here's the map where they're chasing me from behind. Okay, I got it, you know. Um, the first time I played that game, I was so shocked by it and so over the moon about it that I, I played it through the, the end credits, started up a new game, played it all the way through again. Like it just, you yeah. know, <laughs> you, you have those experiences once, right? So yeah, yep. you'll, you'll, a game will hit you pretty, pretty well at a good time and, and you'll forever compare things to that. And you know, it's a real thing. Related question though, when you play Fire Emblem, do you play in a way where like if you lose a unit, you have to start over that level, or do you just like keep going? Like, what what is your play style with it? Only monsters keep going, unless you oh. don't unless you don't like those characters, then screw them. But okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it. Yeah, I don't. I don't. There's not. There's not a good answer for that. Honestly, yeah. if you're the type of person that restarts a map in Fire Emblem because you've lost a character. Seriously, just switch it to casual mode. Like there is no, there's no shame in it at this point. Like, just finish the map and and don't waste hours and hours doing the same map over and over. <laughs> but that, oh. that, that's just my soap box. <laughs> Yo, uh, man, I'm one of those guys. <laughs> Yeah, so um, the second one. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, man, Shinjo knows what's up, man. You know, I mean, I it's it's like perfection, but like, oh, I I can't describe it. But it's... well, see, no, what happens is once you beat the game, basically you beat every stage without having a character die. Like, I mean, in the yeah, you restarted, but in the end, you were able to do that at least once. Right. Maybe just exactly. not your first time. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. also I think it's the well in the later Fire Emblem games you get to you know ship different people together they get married and have kids and oh, they have different storylines I know I know <laughs> it's pre- it's pretty cheesy when I enter the, the territory of cheese and corn but you know I don't know it just gets to me sometimes I'm like I'm yeah. like fork man I gotta yeah. I have the characters yeah but hey know. the the game I was thinking about when you mentioned Might and Magic is actually called Ma- Might and Magic Clash of Heroes which just feels like confusing naming right to me <laughs> yeah uh, I bet, i've heard that before yeah it was uh, kind of a strategy puzzle game on ds mm-hmm. actually really good like mm. a really really good game so then that's another one. Oh, uh so to kind of get back to me i i think i'll talk about one more game and this is one that i played the heck out of on super nintendo actually and it's a super nintendo game made by capcom Mm. And if you start thinking of Super Nintendo games made by Capcom, you get, uh, let's say, Street Fighter, Final Fight, uh, was it um, Breath of Fire, I think, was a Capcom yes. game. Mm. So yeah, you start thinking of, of that type, Mega Man, obviously, uh, that type of game. My game is actually called Saturday Night Slam Masters. Have, Whoa. Have either of you heard of Saturday Night Slam Masters? No. I've- I've heard of Saturday Night Live. But I've never Very heard of different Night thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh man, you know what? I've never heard of it, but I, I, I feel, I kind of feel like it. <clears throat> Slam Masters. I feel like it's like a basketball game. All right, all right, all right. Okay, I know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. <laughs> so, yeah, picture, picture this. Think of a game that kind of combines Final Fight and Street Fighter. Mm-hmm. So. You have Final Fight in the aspect of it's kind of you move up and down like it's not uh, just a standard 2D plane. You have Street Fighter in that you have some like special moves and and there's a lot of complexity in in the move set that you have. But take that, take those two games molded together, and put it in a wrestling ring. Whoa! Whoa. That is what Saturday Night <laughs> Slam Masters is. It's very cartoony characters, outlandish. Um, Hagar from Final Fight is actually in there because he's in everything. Uh, Interesting. (laughs) So it's very much Capcom. It it is in the Street Fighter slash Final Fight universe, but it is a wrestling game um, that had two player co op. Like, so Mm. you could have like tag team matches and things like that. And 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 you play it like you would a a wrestling game with 
more Street Fighter style moves. It is an amazing game. It's an incredible game, and mm. like even if you look up reviews for it at this point, it's really highly reviewed and such. But for whatever reason, that just, that got kind of lost in the nostalgia wave of the Capcom Super Nintendo games. So uh, mm. I would definitely recommend everybody, you know, just take a look at it because it it it's different than you probably expect from what I'm saying. It's a lot brighter, color, more colorful, but it, it's just it's a lot of fun to play, and it's a complex game kind of combining the two genres that we we know it, it, it's neat it, it's something that if you haven't heard of it before and i'm guessing probably quite a few people haven't uh it's definitely mm. worth your time to to look at and i would really like to see it come back on some sort of uh capcom classics collection or you know something like that yeah. I, i'd like yep. i'd like to see it resurface at some point because a very underrated game in my opinion yeah like i'm just looking at the the promotional flyer for this game and it looks so freaking epic like man like this this guy in the background <laughs> he's like purple and he has like big arms and like these two guys are just like staring like profusely at each other and man okay well, <laughs> I, well there, there's I, a I character mean, that if you follow wrestling there's a character that's kind of like uh vader uh there's a character that's kind of like ray mysterio and then there's mm. more like obviously capcom type people like uh, mm-hmm. a really tall guy named titan a really fat guy named jumbo it, it's just it's a good game it's a really good game <laughs> man all the characters have very defined move sets it's more like street fighter in that aspect like you're not just playing carbon copies of, of the same character it, right right mm-hmm. definitely worth a look so here's hoping somebody somebody takes a look at it so that's all i got yeah well <laughs> i'm gonna watch videos on this <laughs> after doing the other stuff that I have to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, I want to do. I mean, it, I, man, I, this is a, it's awesome. I have like a list of things now. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So I have another game, and this one is it's kind of well-known. Like when, when I say the name, you're, it's probably going to ring a bell, and you probably know about it. But to me, the amount of people that have played it, it, it can never be enough. The game is called Clubhouse Games for the Nintendo DS. Okay. Does it mm-hmm. ring a bell? Yep. A little bit, yeah. Nice. I never played it, actually, to to your point, but I, ah. I it does, the name <laughs> is familiar. Cool. So I had this saying back in the day, back in the heyday when I was in love with this game, and it was, if everyone in the world had a Nintendo DS and a copy of this game, the world would be a better place. Wow. I don't know how much sense, <laughs> how much sense that makes, uh, but you know what? I'm going to stick with it. I'm 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 standing by that. <laughs> Fair enough. Basically, the game is a collection of 42 different sort of like mini games. So you know, there's anything between card games like blackjack and poker to right. there's some board games like chess, battleship, and or something like sorry, but it, you know it has a different name, obviously. <laughs> uh, there's also more traditional games like pool or billiards, and there's darts, bowling, hangman, etc. So. There's a lot here, and everything worked really well with the touchscreen. Everything was really easy to control. Everything was very well presented and really, really well polished. Like it was very Whoa. nice and nice to look at. Most of the games have their own different songs and sound effects. Like it was really cool. There's, there was a lot of replay value. You know, back then, the Nintendo DS and the Wii were able to play online, and this game was one of the like a, a one of the first that allow you to play online with mm-hmm. up to eight people. You were able to play most of these games. Mm-hmm. And it was a lot of fun. It had like quick chat when you were playing online, but if you were playing local multiplayer, it had something more akin to picto chat, but with color. That was a lot of fun, even by itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember this game being really highly reviewed. Like, surprisingly yeah, yeah. so for one of those, like, hey, this is 40 games in a collection, right? Those <laughs> typically don't turn out that well, and this was kind of a surprise. It's pretty cool. Looking at the, actually, just pulling it up, I mean, you know, GameSpot gave it 8 out of 10, and IGN gave it 8.5 out of 10. I mean, that's it's pretty decent scores for uh, a collection of games within a game. And, you know, like, just looking at the the roster games, man, I'll be on that Texas Hold'em. I mean, Chinese checkers. <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah. That's, that's, that's dope. Oh man. Yeah. And you know, I think what happens is that, you, you know, most of the time you're looking for like a, a concrete game, like a, like a, I don't want to say it like this in, in a negative way, but like a real game mm-hmm. instead of something like this. But if you do get this in, 
if you know you you have it regarded as what it is it's a collection of mini games but it's a really good one and it's always there and sweet if if the online still worked i would definitely recommend anybody that would be able to buy it to to get it you know it doesn't work anymore it's only it's restricted to local multiplayer but man i had a lot of fun with it no that's awesome and it's cool that you mentioned this sort of game because i feel like a lot of times when we think of like video games we don't think about like like card games or board games within the game it's because it feels like you know maybe you could play those like it, those kind of games you could play in person for the most part but then when you when you actually put into this bundle you know it's just nice to you know have enjoy it on your own and be able to play with other people like just within the same atmosphere like i i think it's and to have 42 uh, 42 is a lot i mean that is a yeah, pretty yeah. nice package so you know <laughs> and do i see this correctly Online multiplayer up to eight players, like that is pretty dope. Yes, like, that is something that I wish. Um, I wish I had this game. Dang, I man, okay, <laughs> dang it. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's it's really cool. I'd love yeah. to see something like that on Switch too. Yeah, definitely. Sweet. You know what? I do have one more. <laughs> if uh, if I may, have you guys played Pokemon Train Card Game? <laughs> the game like on the Game Boy Color. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. It is, it's honestly one of my favorite Game Boy co- games of all time. Just because, like, because back then we were able to get boosters and stuff. Like, we had a store called the Gamekeeper, which when I, every now and then when, you know, I was good enough, I can get a booster pack or so and, you know, we'll collect these Pokemon cards. And, but then a lot of times I never really had anyone to play with. Either that or even at school, like, when we do have the cards, we just talk about it. We don't really, <laughs> didn't really play as much. I, I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's just, and I did play I mean honestly I did play like a couple games like just in person with like like a pre constructed yeah, pre constructed deck that I had overgrowth, which was grass and water. Shout out to Gyarados. Anyway, um <laughs> I and then I got this game on the on the Game Boy and I was like, Wow, like I can I can play against, you know, like computer or computer people and, and just or excuse me, AI. And it's like it's awesome. Even the music is cool. It's like it just it got it got me going, and I was I just it's just cool that we we're able to I'm able to play just the training her game in a Game Boy game. I don't know. It sounds like kind of like Inception. I don't know, but it was just really I thought it was pretty awesome, and I think it was definitely underrated. Like not a lot of people talked about it, but when you did, man, great memories. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> now i remember I that put, yeah. i remember yeah. that coming out and it was it, it's interesting to think about it. pokemon company has been doing some some funny things with their franchises for a while <laughs> for sure yeah you know i would just hate to be that kid that things are getting a new traditional pokemon game and then they start <laughs> playing it it's it's completely different but but gotta definitely gotta admit it's, it's a lot considered harder considered a good game for though. sure for sure oh yeah for sure yeah all right well, I think that's going to do it for episode 14 of the Nintendo Jump podcast. So mm-hmm. if you like the podcast, please let us know. Uh, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Nintendo Jump. We also have a Facebook group that we'd really like for you to join. Uh, and as we mentioned, we now have a Discord group that we'd like for you to join as well. So we will put the links to both of those in the show notes. So please check us out. So if you have any comments or questions about the show or any uh, future topic ideas, please write us at either of those locations, or we also have an email at nintendojumppodcast at gmail.com. So any suggestions you have for future music episodes or topic ideas or your least favorite NES games, as long as they're Yoshi, uh, (laughs) please just write those in. Uh, We we also want to ask that you please give us a review or a like or or whatever it is at your podcast app of choice. Uh, It really helps more people find us, and and we really appreciate those when they come in. So with that, I think we're going to jump on out of here. Once again, this is Daryl, and for Kevin and Sergio, thanks for listening. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.